Welcome to a tutorial on the 8085 vectored interrupts. Okay, so as the pin diagram uh, shows us on the right that uh, the entire set of interrupt pins for the 8085, well, uh, it just extends from pin number 6 to pin number 10 as described earlier. So these are the total set of interrupt pins of the 8085 microprocessor. But when we are talking about vectored interrupts, we would not like to include INTR in uh, the group over here. So apart from INTR, the rest of the interrupt pins, they are basically known as the vectored interrupt pins of the 8085. Now this includes the trap, okay, that is pin number 6, okay. Then we have the RST 7.5, 6.5 and 5.5 all coming under the group of vectored interrupt pins. Okay, so in a way we can just list them down over here. So we have trap, okay, we have RST 7.5, and then again RST 6.5, and finally RST 5.5. So all of these are actually vectored interrupts. Okay, now uh, the question is what do I actually mean by the term vectored interrupts? Okay, that's exactly what I'm telling over here. You see, the, the vectored interrupt pins that we got over here, they, whenever, uh, I mean, any kind of interrupt signal, okay, from any external device, falls onto any of these pins, it can be uh, trap, okay, it can be trap, it can be RST 7.5, 6.5, or 5.5, well, any of the four pins, I mean, four uh, interrupt pins, Whenever there is an input interrupt signal from uh, some external hardware, then what happens is that for these pins, the memory call location is automatically set to a predefined location and you don't need to provide any external hardware for it, like in the case of INTR. So for sending the uh, you know interrupt request or I mean in, in order to engage an, uh, I mean a in order to engage a service routine, okay, that's the interrupt service routine that we are supposed to write for an interrupt signal. In order to do that, we had to specify or rather transfer the program control to a specific predefined memory location or rather defined as the memory call location. So in order to transfer the program control to a call location using INTR, we needed to provide an external hardware okay we needed to provide an external hardware circuit okay but while working with and and it also depends on the design of the external hardware as to which memory call location the program control would basically transfer right but in the case of the trap RST 7.5 6.5 and 5.5 this is not the case whenever there is any kind of in interrupt signal on any of these lines, then the 8085 has an internal circuitry embedded within itself, I mean within the chip itself, that automatically transfer their controls to some predefined memory location without the need of external hardware. So no external hardware needed in order to transfer the program control. And that is why they are referred to as vectored interrupts, meaning that their uh, call locations are uh, set right from the beginning with the aid of inbuilt uh, hardware networks. Okay, so that means they are just vectored to some predefined memory call locations. Okay, so in a way we can basically, you know, uh, summarize by saying that well, vectored interrupts are certain interrupt pins that have inbuilt hardware networks to transfer the program control to pre designated memory locations okay on receiving any interrupt request without the aid of any external hardware as I described a little while ago and so for the uh, pins trap RST 7.5 6.5 and 5.5 the corresponding memory call locations are just provided over here so as you can see that well trap is directed to the location 0024 and so on for the RST uh, we have the corresponding memory call locations as well. Now over here uh, I might you know tell you again that trap has the highest priority 
So if there are simultaneous interrupt requests falling on all of these interrupt pins, then most priority, I mean uh, the highest priority would be just given to the trap pin. Okay, then to the request on RC 7.5, then 6.5, and finally 5.5. Okay, so their uh, priorities are just you know uh, in the order as you can see from top to bottom okay it just goes decreasing whenever as you go down towards the RST 5.5 from tra trap onwards okay so uh, let me just tell you that here the trap pin uh, well this is a kind of in I mean interrupt pin which you cannot control in any way so if there is any kind of input signal I mean interrupt input falling on the trap pin then it can, I mean it is just directly recognized by the 8085 okay and uh, this trap pin cannot be uh, enabled or disabled or controlled in any way okay but on the other hand you see the uh, other interrupt pins that is the RST 7.5 okay 6.5 and 5.5 all of these are also referred to as maskable interrupts okay so they are also referred to as maskable interrupts meaning that they can be either enabled okay or they can also be disabled alright so in order to enable or disable uh, these interrupts and also in a way to control them basically we have uh, a particular instruction that is known as the enable interrupt that is EI which was already shown in the previous tutorial and there's another one which is known as SIM okay you can also call it SIM and now actually we have two uh, instructions to control uh, the uh, RST interrupts actually so whenever we would apply this interrupt enable I mean this enable interrupt uh, signal over here EI okay the I mean this particular uh, instruction would basically uh, you know enter I mean uh, enable the RST interrupts correspondingly okay but whenever we would use the sim command on the other hand then there is a little bit of details that we need to take care of okay now using EI we don't need to take care of that many details I, I mean uh, you, you know you can just declare it that way and everything would just work out but in case of sim there is a certain way uh, how to work with sim okay so we're basically gonna elaborate on the sim instruction over here because we had uh, described the EI instruction in the previous tutorial okay now the instruction sim is actually a one byte instruction and it just stands for set interrupt mask okay so with this particular instruction we can enable disable I mean mask these interrupts and also unmask them okay that just totally depends upon the programmer so uh, this is also a one byte instruction I might write that over here okay sorry it's just a spelling mistake kindly don't mind at that alright so whenever we're working with this uh, instruction that is sim there is a special emphasis laid on the accumulator data content okay so if I might you know tell you that the accumulator data is quite I, I mean the accumulator data byte is what actually serves as the control byte for this particular instruction so if I might you know show you a picture over here okay now this is the accumulator data byte and what is the significance of each of these bits is just given out in this particular diagram okay so let's just start from the bit D0 now sim instruction as I said it just depends upon uh, the data byte present in the accumulator that just serves as the control byte or the control word for the sim instruction okay so uh, over here okay so here we are right so in this uh, accumulator data byte okay which serves as the control word over here you see that uh, the pins I mean the bits D7 and D6 they also enable for uh, serial output data transmission 
but uh, here as you can see that if we put uh, uh, you know a bit one I mean if we just uh, you know set the bit d6 equal to uh, zero then of course there will be no uh, serial output data function okay now since we don't need this as you can see that it, it says that uh, if so I mean uh, the bit d6 okay it says that if one bit d7 is output to sod pin so this means that if it is zero then no serial output okay so this is what it actually means so since we don't need uh, the serial output function over here so we're just gonna uh, keep d6 equal to zero and um, we're not gonna will actually elaborate much on the d7 and d6 pins or I mean uh, the bits over here okay so here these are basically not used or ignored okay so these are I'll just say these are basically ignored over here now since we're just dealing with the interrupts okay so now the rest of the pins here correspond to interrupts now the bit d5 is just a don't care condition it, it doesn't matter whatever bit you have over here and now the bits d4 to d0 are the ones of certain importance okay so these are the bits of imp uh, I mean uh, bits of interest over here now you can see that uh, if we just put a logic 0 into any one of the bit positions of d0 d1 or d2 then it would just mean that each of the RST 7.5 okay 6.5 and 5.5 would be enabled correspondingly okay so this would just mean that these RST interrupts would just be enabled if we would have a logic 0 voltage level uh, at each of the D0, D1 and D2 bit positions okay and next in order to enable them we also need to set bit D3 to logic 1 level so here bit D3 is referred to as mask set enable or MSE in short so we need to keep it to a logic 1 level I mean we need to set D3 to logic 1 level in order to keep the RST uh, bits I mean in order to set the uh, masking capability of the RST interrupts that we are using over here and also there is an additional control pin or a, a control bit that is bit D4 as you can see for the RST 7.5 interrupt so if we would set it to 1 then yeah I mean if we just set the D fourth bit to logic 1 then obviously the RST 7.5 uh, interrupt pin would just be uh, set off okay I mean it would just be disabled so we need to keep it at the logic 0 voltage level in order to keep the RST 7.5 pin on okay so this is how the accumulator data byte acts as the control word okay and after we have just uh, you know designated I mean you know we have just loaded the accumulator with the required bits okay for each of the corresponding bit positions then after that we need to declare or uh, this particular instruction that is sim in order to enable all these uh, you know interrupts the RST interrupts I'm talking about over here so that way we just work with the RST interrupts okay so I'm just gonna give you an example over here let's say we need to uh, keep all the uh, interrupts let's see 7.5 6.5 and 5.5 we need to keep all of them enabled then what do we do okay let's, let's just you know uh, bring out the bit positions over here so there you go okay so now if we would uh, uh, require to load the accumulator with a certain data byte then what would it be so in order to do that let's just follow this chart and uh, you know work out this example over here so we don't need uh, I mean we need to keep the D7 and D I mean the serial data output we need to just keep that disabled so in order to do that we need to keep the uh, D6 bit position to logic 0 volts level so D6 is logic 0 and uh, so therefore it doesn't matter what 7 is so generally we shall keep it to logic 0 okay d5 is a don't care condition so we can just keep it to 0 not a problem 
and now we don't want the RST 7.5 to be reset okay we don't want it uh, to be uh, in the off state so we need to keep it on so we would put a logic zero voltage level on the D4 bit okay so D4 also contains logic zero and finally D3 needs to be kept at logic one in order to set uh, the mask of uh, I, I mean in order to set uh, the D2 D1 and D0 bits that is the RST 7.5, 6.5 and 5.5 masking capabilities so we would keep it at logic 1 and in order to enable each of the uh, interrupts, the RST interrupts, we need to keep them that's the D2, D1, D0 bits, we need to keep all of them at logic 0 voltage levels okay so there you go now this just works out to a hex code of yeah let's just see so we just divided into two groups of eight yeah so th there we have our hex code that is 08h so this is exactly the data byte that we would require to load into the accumulator before declaring the sim statement so our programming code in order to do that would go uh, somewhat this way now since we are just uh, going to enable the RST interrupts over here so we will just use the sim statement and uh, we are not going to focus or, or you know not going to use the EI statement I mean e EI command over here because that will just result in enabling all of the interrupts including INTR so we're just going to work with sim over here so first we load this data byte into the accumulator so we're going to write here MVI A comma 0 8h okay so now that a is loaded with this data byte we are now supposed to declare the sim command so just writing these two lines okay we can enable all the RST interrupts so RST 7.5 6.5 and 5.5 gets enabled under these two lines of program code so this just results in enabling all of these interrupts okay so this is how it just works out okay so moving ahead we also find another instruction known as RIM or RIM which stands for read interrupt masks okay so this is also a one byte instruction and uh, well this instruction is basically used in order to monitor the status of the corresponding RST interrupt pins that's the 7.5, 6.5 and 5.5 pins correspondingly okay so let me just elaborate a bit you see uh, if we have an interrupt request on the RST 7.5 pin and then simultaneously we have another request on the RST 6.5 pin so it's quite natural that the 7.5 being higher in priority compared to the 6.5 this interrupt request on the 7.5 would be acknowledged first okay or rather it will be dealt with by the 8085 microprocessor first so this would be dealt first and then comes RST 6.5 now whenever RST I mean whenever the request on the RST 6.5 has to wait before uh, the uh, necessary steps or necessary instructions for the request on 7.5 could be executed before we say that the request on the RST 6.5 interrupt pin is basically pending at this particular moment so if during the course of a program we need to if we need to monitor okay that what is the status of the RST interrupt pins whether the request is being executed I mean whether it is uh, you know I mean whether we have any uh, interrupt requests pending or not or uh, whether the um, interrupt pins are enabled or not we can just check it by using this RIM or the RIM instruction okay so whenever we would declare or use the RIM instruction what it will do is that it will just load the accumulator okay so it will just load the accumulator with a with an 8-bit data okay it will just load it with an 8-bit data by studying which we can I mean whose particular bits would correspond or you know convey the information as to the current status of the RST interrupt pins okay 
So again, I might you know uh, show that by means of a picture over here. Okay, so this is exactly what I was talking about. So this interrupt status word that you can see, which is an 8-bit data, okay? This is loaded into the accumulator once you execute the RIM instruction, okay? So whenever you write anywhere uh, RIM, okay, then immediately the corresponding uh, you know, 8-bit word, okay, that just, you know, corresponds to the current status of the RST interrupts would just be loaded I into the accumulator. So this word, it just goes into the accumulator, all right? And, you know, monitoring that, you can basically uh, find out which of the interrupts are pending. Like, for example, here, again, we have, you know, as you can see, the D7, uh, which is referred to serial input data bit. So if there is any uh, data bit on the... Um, SID pin, it would just be uh, taken in as an input. So we, we don't uh, need this over here, so we'll just basically ignore this thing. So we're gonna ignore this thing, okay? So D7 bit is not of any use for us currently because we're just, in, you know, discussing interrupts. So the main bits of interest is starting from D6 to D0. So from D6 to D4, the three bits, D6, D5, and D4, well, they actually correspond to the interrupt, I mean the RST interrupt 7.5, 6.5, and 5.5 respectively. And if any one of the bits from D6 to D4 are set to the logic one level, okay, then basically we are supposed to understand that whichever bits are just set to logic one level, then their corresponding RST interrupts are pending okay like for example if d5 bit is set to logic 1 then we we can basically say that the 6 point, uh, the rst 6.5 interrupt has a pending request on it similarly if it happens on uh, that of d4 then we are we are going to say that well pay, i mean the uh, interrupt pin that's rst 5.5 has an has a pending interrupt request okay now, in order to uh, use this, we must not actually confuse it with the uh, interrupt, uh, I mean the interrupt control word that is set in the accumulator to, uh, that I just, you know, showed you in the beginning, okay? So, yeah, this one. So, we should not actually confuse the interrupt status word with the interrupt control word that is to be loaded in the accumulator, okay? This is, this just uh, indicates the status, okay? So, if once again, if uh, the interrupts are enabled, then we can see that the bit D3 over here, that's the interrupt enable flag, would just be kept at the logic one level, okay? That way we can also check whether the interrupts are enabled or not. And finally, we can see that, well, the D0, 1, and 2 uh, corresponding respectively to the interrupts, RST interrupts, 5.5, 6.5, and 7.5, if they're, uh, I mean, if uh, this status word is just found to have these corresponding bits D0, D1, and D2 at logic 0, then we are supposed to understand that the corresponding RST interrupts are actually available, okay? And otherwise, they are masked. Okay, so that's how we can basically use the RIM instruction in order to uh, obtain the status of the um, interrupt pins whenever and wherever we might require them. Okay, so we shall exhibit, I mean, uh, you know, actually uh, show the use of the RIM instruction uh, in a program at a later tutorial. But for this tutorial, this is where we just end our discussion for now. And we are going to see you in the forthcoming tutorial. So till then, goodbye for now and meet and see you in the forthcoming tutorials.